I frequent a lot of racist places on the internet, and I have never heard of this before. This is the first time I'm hearing about this information. Today specifically, I want to talk about oblique references to a pregnant Anne Frank, what they mean, and how they've become a contemporary reactionary meme and signal. What is up guys, it's me, your boy Chud Logic. In YouTube chat still isn't on the screen, but I can see you. Okay, so as you know, I'm a big fan of car posting, even though he's like a leftoid and probably disagrees with all my racist takes. Um, I can't help but like the guy, and I like his dog whistle videos. Now, he's just released a new one, and I think the topic of this is going to be quite mind-blowing to you. It was certainly mind-blowing to me. Okay? The title of this video is as follows. Dog Whistles 101, Pregnant Anne Frank. Now, has any person in chat familiar whatsoever with the supposed dog whistle known as Pregnant Anne Frank? I frequent a lot of racist places on the internet. And I have never heard of this before. This is the first time I'm hearing about this information. The Confederacy is involved. Okay, so you know a little bit to know the Confederacy. Okay, 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 okay. Anyway, he's going to lay it out for us. Let's see what Card Posting's got to say. Hello there, my name's Card. I'm a long-time progressive community organiser and activist. And today, I just want to briefly talk about a reactionary dog whistle that's been around for a couple of years now, as well as what it really means, who's using it, and why. For those who might not know, in politics, a dog whistle is a word, a phrase, or a symbol which seems perfectly innocent or innocuous to most people, but which really communicates a more sinister hidden message to those in the know. Additionally, there'll also be a playlist of videos of mine linked at the top of the description, which goes into detail about all sorts of reactionary dog whistles and how to spot I feel them. like I've said all this stuff about dog whistles before. The thing for me, I don't really obviously personally care that much, but then, you know, I'm not a leftoid anymore, I guess. But um, if if people if a normal person doesn't understand it, it escapes me a little there. Like, what is the purpose then? Because you're just communicating with other people that know what you're talking about, and the people that are not aware are not aware. So therefore, it's probably not going to affect them, though. No? Today specifically, I want to talk about oblique references to a pregnant Anne Frank, what they mean, <laughs> and how they've become a contemporary reactionary meme and signal, particularly in online spaces. Long story short, around mid-2018, on 4chan's history board, it was particularly popular to write alternate history stories describing what might have happened following the US Civil War had the Confederate South won. Oh, you guys were right. Some of, some of you said it was about the Confederacy. You were right. Yes. No way. Oh! Shiba Inu dog clapping his hands happily while Bravo is above him. Thank you very much. Well done, guys. Well done. So, yeah, my guess here, and the reason this is a bit perplexing to most of us, is I think that card posting is probably coming up against the problem we all have from time to time, okay? And that is content drought. So, I'd presume he's probably covered a lot of the popular dog whistles, okay? So now I think he's had to dig quite deep to find another dog whistle to talk about. And it just so happens to be one that is quite obscure. So most of us have got no idea what it is. But anyway, I respect the hustle. I get it. Um, let's, see, let's see what this means. A common theme of a lot of these stories was what might have happened had the Confederate States of America made it to the 20th century and fought in the Second World War. Bizarrely enough... <laughs> a concept that became a meme of sorts among the people writing these alternate history stories was the idea that a Confederate America would invade Nazi-occupied Europe and liberate, among others, Anne Frank, the famous Jewish Holocaust victim diarist. Stranger still, many of these 4chan posters would go on to write up long screeds wherein they imagine Frank subsequently marrying and then being impregnated by a Confederate <laughs> Second World okay, War soldier. Wonderful. But how do I make money <laughs> off the press? This people? is crazy. I love it. Does he have glorious Aspergers? Thank you for the five dollars. 
I appreciate we're doing alternate history, so anything is possible in alternate history. But um, would that even be possible? Like, I guess if anything's possible, anything's possible. But based on our understanding of the Second World War, would it have even been possible to have liberated Anne Frank? Because my understanding is that Anne Frank was, you know, like, unsavable, so to speak. You know, put in some... Well, I don't know where Anne Frank went. Put in some death camp somewhere and, and um, murdered, executed, slaughtered, genocided. So how would you have saved her without the series of events dramatically changing? We're talking about fan fiction. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, I understand that. And I, like I just said, of course, if you want to say, well, anything's possible, okay, then it's like, well, yeah, okay, well, anything's possible then. You can fly in on a bunch of eagles and pick up all the Jews and fly them out of fucking Auschwitz. Like, I don't care about what is... If anything's possible, anything's possible. It's a really stupid concept. I'm saying, realistically, was there a chance that could have happened based on what we understand about World War II? And it's like, uh, probably not. I haven't I haven't heard about Anne Frank for ages. To be honest with you, we've not spoken about Anne Frank enough on this stream. What happened to her exactly? Well, where did she go? How, you know, where did she die? Anne Frank died at the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. The Belsen, oh, the Belsen concentration camp. My mum used, uh, used to live in Germany, lived in Belsen for a little while. Because um, my, it, it basically was a military thing, to put it simply. And um, apparently, like, she went to visit the death camp to pay her respects to the Nazi. No, no, idea. <laughs> no, she went there and was like, there's no way that the townspeople didn't know about this. Like, it was so, so close and so obvious there's no way the townspeople wouldn't have known that something was going on. And, you know, it made her hate the German people more, basically, because she thought, like, how could they not have known? You know, that's the way my mumsy, you know, that's the way our mind works. Anyway, I know about that. I didn't realise it was Belson. Damn. Um, okay. In February or March of 1945. Right. February or March of 1945. Yeah, there's no way. Belson is in Germany. There's no there's no way that yeah. Copium. Sorry, Confederates, you're coping. Anne Frank. Anne Frank was doomed. Unlucky. This went on and on until people were eventually posting drawn artwork of a pregnant Anne Frank and her Confederate soldier husband all over the website. Oh dude, what the fuck? Of a pregnant Anne Frank. That is insane, dude. Look, they've even got the Star of David on the cardigan. And then, obviously, that's her diary dropping on the floor because she doesn't need it anymore. And her <laughs> Confederate soldier husband all over the website. For a while, any and all historical discussion at all would turn into these alt history fantasies about Anne Frank. And it got to the point where 4chan has felt emboldened enough to start posting this sort of stuff on more mainstream sites like Twitter and Facebook. Where now... The soldier had a musket, presumably, because they were LARP it. They were doing like a sort of like a LARP of like, oh yeah, they'd be just armed just like they were in the uh, Civil War, right? That's, the, that's what I imagine. They go and fight them with muskets and win. Is that a musket? I don't know. Maybe it's a normal rifle. Anyway. Since most normal people would find this all really strange and off-putting. The point isn't that the pregnant Anne Frank alternate history thing is overtly offensive in the same way most bigotry is, although it is certainly a product of bad taste. But the pregnant Anne Frank signifier serves to be something of an obtuse reference that only people aware of the online backstory surrounding all this will make in order to signal their knowledge of old 4chan memes to one another. And people who reference old 4chan memes and content like this are more often than not people familiar with and typically... See, like, look, I really like car posting. I think he's got a good little thing here. He's obviously, like, serious about his politics stuff. He's doing stuff in the real world. It's all, It seems like it's almost like a hobby to him to do these videos where he updates people, you know, on uh, on this stuff. So I don't have, like, a personal issue. It's not like when some leftoids are really insufferable and you're like, oh, my fucking God, dude. Okay, that's wonderful. 
But it's kind of like it's quite it's quite quaint. It's quite so quaint and endearing, you know. Hoop posting. Thank you for the five dollars. Appreciate it. So, but you know, I look at this and I'm like, bro, we're really like that in the weeds that we're worried about some super obscure meme that most of my audience could at best a couple of people could associate with something to do with the Confederacy, but had no meaningful idea of what it was. And I've got some extremely racist people that watch me. You know, I think we get into the stage where if this is what we're worried about, I don't think that's a concern. I don't think a super obscure 4chan meme that relates to fictionalized history of the Confederates winning. Uh, I feel we're over egging the pudding a bit. OK, we're, we're probably over. We're probably at this stage getting a bit overly concerned with this stuff. But, you know, I wouldn't worry if you're a lefty, if you're a leftoid. Don't worry, guys. I think you're going to be fine. You know, I don't think you need to worry about the Anne Frank pregnancy meme, but at least we know now, at least we're educated. Typically sympathetic to the alt-right worldview. Someone making a reference to a pregnant Anne Frank who has been rescued by Confederate soldiers is signalling their deep familiarity with terms and jokes only held on to by the image board website. Okay, Dub. I see a comment in chat. Um, I, I don't know if I can actually say that on stream because, I mean, you know, it's YouTube and then they get a bit funny about that sort of thing. I've been stung before, shall we say, but uh, I'll take that into consideration. Sites most commonly used by the online far right. So for the sake of keeping yourself and your spaces safe, just keep it in mind. It's always good to be able to recognize alt-right messaging and signaling like this so you can spot it, denounce it, explain what it is and why it's bad to others and remove the people posting this sort of stuff. Okay, so if you've got a lefty hug box and someone comes in and starts posting pictures of a pregnant Anne Frank saying, look at what the Nazis took from us. Look at what the Nazis took from us, guys. We could have had this, if only, if only, not knowing it's about the Confederacy winning the Second World War, whatever. Then you can go, in that exact instance, you can go, right, guys, this is a meme. This is a dog whistle. They're actually talking about this. Lay it out. Ban them. Tell everyone. Hopefully not everyone thinks you're a schizo and you'll be fine. Okay, I can see it. I see the vision. I see the vision. I get it. That's all I have to say today. I hope it helps. <clears throat> Once again, my name's Card. If you might want to hear more from me, especially more about emerging or obscure reactionary dog whistles and how to spot them, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube page or just take a look at my other videos. Either way, goodbye for now. And stay safe out there. Wait, we need his, uh, yeah. Go on, car posting. Go on, lads. Yeah, that's another point as well. Yeah. Dog whistles should be really simple and not suspicious, but saying pregnant Anne Frank automatically labels you as some kind of freak. Yeah, Anne Frank is like the one thing that would, well, not the one thing, but one of the things that would make, like, you can't talk about that in any sort of way beyond, I mean, even if you just brought it up, people would think you're weird, right? If you just thought, said, oh, what about that Anne Frank, eh? Remember Anne Frank? People would be like, uh, what? <laughs> what are you talking about Anne Frank for, you fucking weirdo? So yeah, it's probably not a particularly effective dog whistle. The, okay. Oh, dude. This is from Wikipedia. This is from Wikipedia. This is from Wikipedia. This is from Wikipedia. Wikipedia, Wikipedia, Wikipedia. This is not anti-Semitic. I'm allowed to look at this. This is research, okay? So there are claims that it was faked, right? Denials of authenticity and legal action. After the diary became widely known in the 50s, various allegations against the veracity of the diary and its contents appeared, with the earliest published criticism occurring in Sweden and Norway. Of course, those fucking Nazoids were all over that. In 1957, Free Words, the magazine of the Sweden neo-fascist organization, National League of Sweden, Hmm, okay, dude. <laughs> Yo, the fascists are saying it's fake, bro. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? Struggling with ever-increasing housing prices? 
You can't afford your rent and about to get evicted by evil greedy landlords and satanic hedge funds? Join the poll today, so okay, that you bro. can live rent free in this guy's head. Thank you, very true. Thank you for the 20 pounds. Very generous, thank you. Um, published an article who previously wrote anti-Semitic articles about the Danish Jewish author, George Brandes. Among other things, he, the article claimed the diary had been written by Maya Levin, some other dude, apparently. In 1958, at the performance of the Diary of Anne Frank in Vienna. Bro, I tell you what. Very depressing. Terrible ending. Terrible ending, that play. I tell you what. Don't go that for a first. Don't go there for a first date. You'll be severely disappointed. Okay, especially not if the person is Jewish. Simon Wisenthal. Oh. 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 He. Oh. He's one of the Jewish survivor guys. Okay. Hasn't he gotten a lot of shit? People have said that he's like a liar as well, apparently, or something. Was challenged by a group of protesters who asserted that Anne Frank. Okay. Fucking hell, dude. These guys are a bit much, aren't they? Challenged Wisenthal to prove her existence by finding the man who had arrested her. Wisenthal indeed began searching for Carl Sillabauer and found him in 1963. When interviewed, Sillabauer admitted his role and identified Anne Frank from a photograph as one of the people arrested. Sillabauer provided a full account of events, even recalling emptying a briefcase full of papers on the floor. His statement corroborated the version of events that had previously been presented by witnesses such as Otto Frank. Dude, this is the problem with these conspiracy theories, is this is very good evidence that it happened. But people will deny it, and they'll be like, nah, this is all fake, this is all nonsense. Sorry, guys, sorry to break it to you fascists, okay, but Anne Frank was real and got slaughtered. It is what it is, okay, I don't know what to tell you. But the diary, whether or not the diary was real, source Wikipedia, Oh, yes, of course. I forgot who runs Wikipedia. <laughs> what is this about the diary not being real, though? A school teacher and former Hitler youth member who published a school paper that described the diary as a forgery. The complaint was extended to include Heinrich Budegerg, who wrote a letter in support. The court examined the diary in 1960 and authenticated the handwriting as matching that in the letters known to have been written by Anne Frank that declared the diary to be genuine. Okay, so, well, the court said it's genuine. Obviously, you know, I'm sure that the, uh, the Nazoids will have a problem with that, but we don't need to get into that. What's this next bit? In 1976, Otto Frank took action against Heinz Roth of Frankfurt, who published pamphlets stating the diary was a forgery. The judge ruled that if Roth were to publish any further statements, he would be subjected to a fine of 500,000 German marks and a six-month jail sentence. Okay, listen, guys. I know that's going to sound wacky to you Yankoids. But the reality is, obviously, Germany has got a lot of issues. Ger Let's just say that Germany is a bit precious about this whole thing, and they tend not to like people denying stuff like that, okay? <laughs> I personally don't, don't like that, you know. I understand the reasoning why they do it. Dude, the Germans are so worried that, like, you know, this sort of mentality is within them so deeply that they can't possibly... They can't possibly let them talk about it because otherwise it might happen all over again. <laughs> Dude, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Okay, just ease off a bit. Listen, let the deniers have their say. What's the come on, dude? Anyway, listen, guys, I do probably need to be careful. Um, I look, I'm a big, I'm a blue, I'm very blue pilled on this. Okay, I think it probably did happen. I think it's probably true. Um, I don't think that if you want to deny that, though, that you should be arrested personally. Okay? I think that that's wrong. I think you should be able to say your piece about it. I think these sorts of ideas are best debated, hashed out, and discussed rather than shut down with law. That's my personal view. They're terrified of themselves. Anyway, guys, there we go. So we got a little bit of bonus Anne Frank content in at the end there, didn't we? Hey? <laughs> 